It's October, which means I have to do something horror-related. In the past, I did videos on my most hated horror cliches or my favorite horror tropes. Today, I wanted to have a little fun and give you my top five favorite horror novels. By the way, my name is Brandon McNulty. I'm a writer. I'm the author of Bad Parts and also the author of Entry Wounds, and welcome to my writing channel. So as for my favorite horror novels, this was a tough list to pick because I have a lot of favorites, and narrowing it down to five was just brutal, so I want to give a couple honorable mentions right up front. First honorable mention goes to Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. Anyone who has read this book or seen the movie knows that it's a dark story, even by Stephen King's standards. It takes place in a small New England town. A family moves into a house that just so happens to be built near an Indian burial ground. And there also is a pet cemetery built upon that Indian burial ground. And whenever kids bury their pets there, they tend to come back to life in a not so normal way. And it's a really fun story. If you haven't checked it out yet, definitely read Pet Cemetery before you watch the movies. I highly recommend it. By the way, I'll be linking to all the books that I mentioned in this video. I will be linking to them in the description below. My second honorable mention goes to The Woods Are Dark by Richard Lehman. And if you've never read a Richard Lehman novel, they're basically the book equivalent of a really good slasher flick. They're dark, they're bloody, they're disgusting, they're exciting, they're fun. And The Woods Are Dark is my favorite one because not only does it push the envelope, it tears the envelope to shreds. It's really extreme. It's about a family that they go on vacation and they stop at a diner along the way and while they're at the diner a couple of them get kidnapped by cannibals who take them into the woods and then the remaining members have to go in the woods and try and rescue them. And this book goes into some gruesome directions. It never feels safe and that's what I love about Layman's stuff. It always feels dangerous because you never know what you can expect and he never pulls punches. All right, now let's dig into the actual list. Number five is Hex by Thomas Old Hoyvolt. And he's a Dutch author, so I probably just butchered his last name, but that's okay because I have a lot of great things to say about Hex. And Hex is about a small town. It's in the Hudson Valley in New York. And this small town is haunted by a witch. And this is not your typical green-skinned, big-nosed witch who stirs a cauldron and cackles the whole time. This witch has her mouth sewn shut and her eyes sewn shut, and she wanders around the town at all times even in broad daylight. She might show up in your living room. She might show up on the staircase at midnight. She might show up on the sidewalk and people have to cover up the fact that she's there. And the crazy thing about this book is that you would say that, okay, well, if there's this witch haunting the town, why don't people just leave? And the reason why you can't leave is because once you move into this town, once you take up residence there, if you try to leave, your head gets filled with suicidal thoughts until you come back. So it's a really creepy situation. I found the book to be really gripping and atmospheric. I know some people complain that it's too slow, they don't like the ending, but for my money, I thought this was one of the best books out there in recent years. Number four is Nightwear by John Everson. And if you follow this channel, you know that I hate haunted house stories. I talked about it in my video on my top five most hated horror cliches, and I just hate haunted house stories because they're all pretty much the same. You have a family that moves into a suburban home, it's always a suburban home, and then there's all of a sudden doors that are opening randomly, and there's ghosts making noise in the attic, and all those different things. It's it just, it's been done a million times before. And what I suggested in my video was that you could breathe new life into the haunted house genre by setting these types of stories in different locations. For instance, Jurassic Park is a haunted house story that is set in a theme park full of dinosaurs. And Nightwear by John Everson is a haunted house story that is set in a sex club. Anyway, Nightwear opens up with our two main characters. They're a swinger couple, Ray and Mark, and they get a little red envelope in the mail one day that invites them to Nightwear. And this is something that Ray has been looking forward to for a long time. And when they make the trip to Nightwear, they see that it's a little more extreme than the clubs that they're used to. At first, they only see the entranceway, which is basically a dance floor where there's gothic music playing. There's a bar nearby. But one of the main characters, Ray, she wants to get to the heart of Nightwear. And there are different levels of Nightwear, just like there are the seven circles of hell. And it's all for her about getting to the real heart of Nightwear. That's what she wants most. And she has to make sacrifices in order to get there. Meanwhile, her boy friend Mark is all about keeping her from getting there. He's interested in the club, but he only goes along with it because he loves her. And this was a surprisingly emotional story. When I first picked it up, I thought it was going to be all sex and gore and twisted shit. But there's a strong emotional core to Nightwear, and it's all about what people will do to go after the things that they want most, whether it's good for you or not. 
Number three is I Am Legend by Richard Matheson. And I came into this book with rock bottom expectations because I simply didn't like the Will Smith movie. It just didn't click with me. But a few years after I watched it, I decided to sit down with the book and I heard a lot of great things about it. And I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot. And I was blown away. And I think it, it had such a deep connection with me because the book is such a great representation of isolation and loneliness. And I think most writers understand these things because we do spend a lot of time by ourselves, whether it's by choice or it's just because we're introverts or whatever it is, we spend a lot of time by ourselves and that isolation is a pretty strong feeling that we are used to. And in the book I Am Legend, it's about the vampire apocalypse and the main character Neville is trapped in his house, he's boarding up the windows and he refuses to go out because he doesn't want to get bitten by those things. And the sense of isolation in it, again, is so strong, and when you have moments in the story where he does encounter something like a dog or another human being, it's such a powerful sensation, and the highs in this book are just so high that I can't help but put it at number three on my list. Number two is American Psycho by Bret Easton Ellis. And this book, if you click with its sense of humor, it will be one of your favorite books. The book follows a Wall Street yuppie, his name is Patrick Bateman, and he's the most shallow person you could possibly imagine multiplied by ten. I mean, all he cares about is his looks, how much his clothes cost, who's wearing the new Oliver Peoples non-prescription eyewear, who has the best business cards in his office, what kind of water he's drinking, is he going to have dinner reservations tonight? It's all stupid shit and it's hilarious. And the funny parts just kind of spill into the gross and disgusting parts. And I find myself laughing when he's butchering people or whatever it is. And it's just, it's just a wild book. And I, you really get into the perspective of the character who's like not somebody we should be rooting for, but at the same time, it's hard not to enjoy it if it does click with you. If you're somebody who gets offended, you're probably not going to like this book, but for me, the only thing that really offends me is Tom Brady, so it was right up my alley, and I love American Psycho, and I'm happy to have it at number two. All right, so before I move on to number one, I want to give you a couple more honorable mentions. The first one is Horns by Joe Hill. I love this book and I really shouldn't because I hate books that indulge in flashbacks. Flashbacks just turn me off for a lot of reasons and this book is full of them and yet I still love it. I don't know what it is. Probably has a lot to do with the concept which is basically that a guy wakes up one morning with horns sticking out of his head. He doesn't know how they got there but he all of a sudden has the ability to manipulate people like the devil. It's just a great concept and the story's really emotional. I cared about the characters and of course it's Joe Hill. He's usually good for a read. Another honorable mention goes to Uzumaki by Junji Ito. This is a manga novel. A lot of my subscribers reach out to me in the comment section and they say, oh, I see Uzumaki on your shelf. I didn't know you were a fan. And yeah, I love this book to death. It's such a great novel. It's about a small Japanese town that gets haunted by spirals and they come in all different shapes and forms. Sometimes it's something as simple as like a plague of snails with their, their spiral shells. Other times you have like a spiral birthmark in someone's head eventually just warping their face out and just creating creating bizarre images, and of course it's manga, so it's all visual. It also has a lot of mind-blowing stuff toward the end. I'm not going to spoil it, but Uzumaki by Junji Ito, one of the best novels out there as far as horror goes. And one last honorable mention is R.L. Stein's book, The Haunted Mask. This is a Goosebumps book. I read it when I was eight years old. It made me love horror. It's about a little girl. She gets bullied by people, and she wants to scare people, so she goes into the shop in town. She goes into this back room, and she buys this haunted mask, and when she puts it on, she's terrifying, but she can't take it off. And the concept just was something that blew my mind when I was eight years old. I've just been in love with it ever since. It's the one horror book that absolutely stands out to me from my childhood, so I gotta include it on this list. Anyway, let's get to number one on my list, and number one is an easy choice and it's Salem's Lot by Stephen King. And this, for my money, is the most entertaining book ever written. And it's got such a great vibe to it. This was when Stephen King was clicking on all cylinders in terms of characters, storyline, mystery, setting. Everything in this book is just on fire. I love Salem's Lot. And the town of Salem's Lot, I can just close my eyes at any given moment and I'm there. And it's just, it's such a real place to me that it just makes everything else around it come to life. All the characters, the scenarios, the vampires overtaking the town. I love Salem's Lot to death. I'm not going to spoil any of it for you. If you haven't read Salem's Lot yet, go to your local library. I'm sure they have a copy and check it out. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm curious, what do you think about my list? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Do you agree with some of the books on there? And also, what is your favorite horror novel? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to support the channel, 
pick up a copy of either of my novels and it's a great time of year to do it. Also, be sure to check out my other videos, hit the like and subscribe buttons for me, share this video with a friend, and as always, remember to keep on writing.